you know, it's cool to see those comparisons. Those things happen a lot. And, you know, I just take them in stride and, and uh, keep, it, keep it going so I can continue to write my story. Again, you know, everybody's got their own story to write, and I got mine. I grew up in Snellville, Georgia. We lived in pretty much the same house since I was a kid. Very community-based, you know, upbringing. You kind of knew everybody. My older brother, when I was three years old, he was seven. He was playing maybe t-ball or slow pitch. He did whatever his brother did. His brother was playing baseball. Kyle was trying to play baseball because, you know, Kyle was a little one and, and brother was playing t-ball and Kyle was too small to play t-ball, but he'd still get out there and run around and do the same things. I just always watched him and, and tried to emulate what he did. We've always known he was good. Like I said, ever since he was a little kid, he was good. He was one of the better players on pretty much every team he's been on. When you get to high school, you get to play varsity in my community. It's like, you know, making it to the league almost. The first game of the year, the varsity team had a scrimmage and the outfielders weren't playing very well. So the second game of the year, I get called up to varsity. Going to the varsity game, I get two hits and I ended up playing varsity for the whole rest of the year. You know, basically he had to earn his way and he did that. Once he got into the lineup, he never came out. We were two of the freshmen on varsity, so that was, we always stuck with each other. He worked hard. He was always the first one there, last one to leave. He always trying to find a way to get an advantage. And that helped him out all the way through high school. I was in 11th grade and I went to a national baseball tournament. I hit a home run and there was a Baltimore Orioles scout. And he came up to my parents and my coach and he told him, he said, uh, he needs to be playing baseball because he can get drafted. For him to say that was kind of like an eye opener for me. And I was like, man, I think I got a shot. You don't know what a what a potential star looks like. So we just nurtured it, you know, let him work out. Coach would let him, and when he was in high school, coach would take him down to the cage, he and a couple of his buddies, and go down there and do extra work in the batting cages. He definitely was, you know, trying to impress everybody. You know, going to showcases and playing travel ball. You know, he did everything he could. So after my junior year, I went down to a showcase towards the end of the summer at Mercer and did really well. And the pitcher for the other team was already committed to Mercer. The pitcher told the coaches at Mercer they needed to sign me too. Even when he got ready to go to, go to college, you know, he was talking about where he had to go. I said, well, you're the one that's got to run those poles, so <laughs> you got to go with your gut as far as what you feel is the right fit. So I took the offer at Mercer. They told me I'd be able to play left field. I wasn't very good at left field. You know, left field was hard for me, so I didn't win that starting job got benched essentially for the, most of that year until the end of the year when I finally got in and uh, finished the year off really strong. So I had a lot of confidence going into summer ball. I went to Lima, Ohio to learn how to play center field and end up winning player of the year in that summer ball league. I knew he was good. He was always one of the better kids on whatever team he was on. So I knew he had a lot of potential, but I really didn't see it until college. and he kind of seemed to set himself apart from other players. That was just a smooth opposite field approach. And the Cape Cod League calls me at the end of the summer and says, hey, we want you to come play for the Cape Cod League in the playoffs, which is the top summer ball league in college. So I'm super excited. I get up to Cape Cod League and I do terrible. So I get back to the school for my sophomore season and I never got my contract for the Cape Cod League. And it's coming up to the time where everybody's signing for their teams and never heard back from the coach. So I'm kind of stuck. And so we have a game at uh, Georgia. I did really well. Hit like, I think I might have been like three for four with a homer. There was a scout there that said he needs to be in Cape Cod League. So we got to make some calls for him. They try to get me up there and they get me on a temporary contract where I was going to be a DH and play first base because they had already had some center fielders from big schools that were signed to go there. So 
I get up to Cape Cod, I'm kind of like not one of the guys they really are thinking about. But they just didn't believe that I could, you know, hit at a high level. So ended up doing really well, never came out the lineup. So when I went back from my junior season at Mercer, I had a ton of confidence and uh, I was ranked really high in the country, like seventh. I just want to continue to get better and better and better. So, so that, you know, those top 10 draft things to maybe turn into top 10, you know, major league players and stuff like that. So that's, what I, that's what, how I kind of look at it. And my goal was to just, you know, win the Golden Spikes Award and win National Player of the Year. I won Conference Player of the Year. And I played in Cape Cod. I felt like, you know, I had a chance to be one of the best players in the country. So I just wanted to show that. Home run number 13 for Kyle Lewis, one of the leading home run hitters in the nation. You know, I think at first I was kind of begging for that attention just so I could be one of those, you know, high profile guys. And then after a while, it was just like, yeah, don't even give me that attention. I don't even want it. Like, I just want to grind, you know, and do what I got to do. And uh, I think it just, once I kind of embraced that role, I think it really like, you know, became my, my identity a little bit. Lewis makes a catch at the wall. Man, I think once I got ranked really high in the country and uh, felt like, okay, like now they're gonna be looking at me. We'd have 30, 40 scouts at every game. We'd have GMs flying in and whatnot. And that was when I realized it wasn't just for fun. Like, it ain't just a joke. You know, you gotta take it serious and you gotta, you know, show up and perform. We had a pro day in the fall. So we're running the 60 and I'm trying to run like my fastest time or whatnot and I pull my hamstring. They're like, well, can he run again? And I'm like, nah, no chance. Like, I'm done, like, I'm done. So they take me up to the training room and I'm just watching all the scouts walk off. So I, I'm at a low point at that point. I'm like, I don't know. You know, are they gonna bail on me or whatnot? And so going into the year, I really had a chip on my shoulder. So I said, man, I gotta do what I know how to do, you know, before I mess my opportunity up. Going into like the last game, I think of the season, Baseball America had announced I was going to be National Player of the Year. I think some publications I was number one player, you know, going into the draft. I did like three, three workouts. When I would go to these BPs, I just wasn't able to hit just homer, 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 homer. Like I was hitting line drive, line drive, line drive. They would always be like, I don't think he has enough power. Like I don't think he really has power like that. And so then that's when I think they got kind of doubtful. That's what always kept happening in my life. So. It was kind of like, you know, one of them things you just take on the chin, like, man, here we go again, you know? This is just who I am, it's my identity. You know, going into the draft kind of felt like, okay, we're talking to Philadelphia at number one, we're talking to so-and-so at number two, number three, and then it just kind of went like, okay, I'm feeling like they're kind of slipping off. And I felt like it was because of, because of they didn't feel like I really had power. His whole motivation the whole time was, I want to go to a team that wants me, and wants, specifically wants me. And that was his whole thing. With the 11th selection of the 2016 MLB draft, the Seattle Mariners select Kyle Lewis, an outfielder from Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. It was like, you know, fireworks went off. It was just, we all just jumped up and, <laughs> and hollered when you hear his name, you see it, you know, see it on TV. So it was, it was just a lot of fun. So I get picked at 11 and I was just hyped. All that stuff about, you know, slipping and they were questionable, like I didn't even care at that point. I was just like, man, let's go. That was a beautiful feeling, like able to kind of see something come a little bit full circle, you know, it's kind of cool. Kyle Lewis, the Mariners thrilled to have him. I think the Mariners were shocked that this guy was available at the 11th pick, but this is what a number one draft pick looks like. He called us at about midnight and said, hey, we got to head for Seattle in the morning. Kenny and I packed up and we went with him, so it all happened really, really fast. Nice to meet you. That afternoon, as soon as the plane landed, we're in a car headed to the doctor for his physicals. Then we're back to the stadium for a game, meeting the, uh, the major league players, you know, and meeting the stars, you know, Kyle Seeger, Robbie Cano, and those guys. In 24, 48 hours, so much was happening. Man, that was a whirlwind. Like, I can't even really remember it because I was so nervous. And um, I had to hit BP, but I didn't have any equipment. Robinson Cano actually ended up letting me use his shoes and his bat. 
I go out there and I'm hitting with his bat, but I don't know how to put the pine tar on the bat because I never use a wood bat without a grip. He gave me these all white batting gloves and I'm like smudging them up with tar and like, the tar is not even making the bat sticky. Like it's just making the bat slippery. I laugh about it now, but at the time I was freaking out. <laughs> I'm like, if I get in this BP and throw this bat, cause it slips out my hand, like I'm, I'm just gonna have to duck my head and walk off. And they're like, now nah, let's see what he can do. Like throw it up and in so he can hit some homers. But I ain't, I've never like hit homers in BP. So I'm like, oh God, no. <laughs> like, I'm hitting good, but like the bat's slippery. So I'm holding on for dear life of the bat. Finally hit like one homer, like left center. And everybody gets all hyped, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> ever since that moment, I always thought about that. Like, all right, like they're gonna have to see in the game. And right now I feel like I'm just on a, an upward progression every year. And so for me, it's just, you know, one of those things where I can't wait to get working and get it going. There's a base hit to right, so the coach is sending me, he's waving me hard. And I remember thinking when I was rounding third, like, all right, I'm about to show him how fast I am type of thing. Like, I'm gonna show him, like, I got real speed. So I was booking it, like, running hard, running harder than I should have been running, like, just because I was kind of out of control running, trying to run so fast. And the, the throw was up the line, the catcher was kind of drifting up the line, too, at me. And I didn't really know what to do because I'm running too hard, I'm running out of control, so. I tried to plant and like kind of, I was planning on like kind of sidestepping him and like slowing up. And then my knee just like popped three times, like pop, 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 pop. So I'm kind of like, whoa, like, and I smash into the catcher and I fall down. And so I'm kind of laying there like, that ain't normal, you know, but it's not hurting so much so that I'm thinking I'm really out. Like I'm thinking like, okay, maybe that was like some weird like you know like you know when you pop your knuckles you pop your fingers that's what I'm kind of thinking like maybe it was something like that kind of thing and I'm laying there it ain't really hurting enough for me to think like I'm out out but I know I remember the back of my leg was like spasming my muscles and so I'm kind of thinking like okay maybe I like popped a calf muscle or something and like maybe like a small knee sprain or something is kind of what I'm thinking so I get up and I walk off and I walk off. And when I go to walk down the stairs, I couldn't even like bend my knee. And that was when I kind of was like, oh, no, nah, that ain't right. Like, that's something else. And I tried to get in the cart and I tried to get in the golf cart. And uh, I tried to pull my leg into the cart and it just wasn't cooperating. And that was when I kind of realized like, nah, yeah, I'm probably done. I kind of was mentally like, able to spend that night like all right this is this is gonna be it for me for a while and then i tried to lay down to go to sleep and it, that was the worst pain i ever had in my life like i couldn't even move a centimeter without it just being like excruciating throbbing pain the trainer calls me in he goes hey the doc doctor wants to speak to you and he just walks out so when he walks out i'm like okay this is not gonna be you know, he goes, hey, uh, you know, you, you tore your ACL, you tore your lateral meniscus, you tore your medial meniscus, you got a partial tear of your MCL, you got like dents on your kneecap. So as he's listing off stuff, I'm just like, my soul is just like getting crushed. I just broke down crying. I was just like overwhelmed. I'm just like, you know, like I got hit with a tornado. Called my mom. I just said, Kyle, I don't know why we're going through this. I don't know if this is for you or for someone else who has to go through something and see that you overcame this, or if it's for one of us who has to understand that we, we can persevere. But what we do know is God will see us through and you're not alone and you don't have to ever feel like you're alone. So if you wanted to call and talk, we're here for you. And uh, once she said that, I remember her saying that and that just kind of like gave me so much more comfort. Like that was kind of when I was like able to really find some peace in that and uh, really be able to like get myself up, you know, be like, okay, what do we need to do? And uh, whatever we need to do, let's get it done so I can get back. Got the stitches out. What a pretty sight. 
we get out of the surgery and he says uh, he was able to repair my meniscus, both of them. And once he said he was able to repair both of them, I had a better long-term outlook from that. And so we were really excited about that. It's been a long time with the just real basic level things. You know, just trying to get the swelling out, trying to get the range of motion. And uh, getting that range of motion was a real fight in of itself because I had so much damage that all of my muscles were trying to protect. The mental side of that was was a, a nightmare, you know, to say the least. It's just like d dark nights, man. We used to sit in there, knees hurting, and uh, wondering if you're gonna play or is this gonna be it for you. It was hard, it really was, but if anybody could do it, I knew he could do it because he has the, the wherewithal to kind of, you know, get through it and see the brighter side of it. So we had those moments and those, you know, those days and conversations where we had to just kind of keep holding on to what we knew to be true, which was this too shall pass. We'll get through this. We're going to be okay. I try to stay where I just keep moving forward. You know, do what you can to get through that day so you can make it to the next day. And then you know that at some point something's got to change, like something's going to happen. But there's a lot of times where I didn't know if it ever stopped hurting. I think those are the best lessons though, and those are the best times for growth. You know, I wasn't gonna bail on myself. Had a good support staff too, my, my agent and my family. My brother helped a lot, man. My brother helps a lot with the mental side of life as a whole, so he always, you know, uh, is a good ear, you know, and a good voice. And my parents, got a lot of credit to them too, because they, they teach humility and respect and like patience, so. And my agent too, man, I just give a lot of credit to everybody that is in my team, my circle, because they all just try to provide something different to help the situation. And then I finally got back to playing. I still had tendonitis, but at that point I was honestly restless, so I was like, man, I think I can play. So I go to high A Modesto, and the first game I go to play, there's a ball at the wall, I make a leap at catch. When I come down, tendonitis flares up really bad. So now I gotta walk off the field again. When I get in the locker room, I'm just like, just crushed. So then we, we worked on it, worked on it. And they're like, man, I think you can manage it if you just go back. So I go back and play like 38 games. I mean, my knee's like hurting a lot, you know, but I'm kind of playing, kind of hitting pretty decent. Finish the year up. They're like, you can go to the Arizona Fall League and continue to play. So I go to do a knee, get a knee evaluation before the Fall League and they say, your knee is 20% less functional than the other side. Once they tell me I you know, really shouldn't have been playing, I'm kind of like, all right, well, let's make sure we get it right. Ultimately, the goal is full season next year, which would have been 2018. I spend the first two weeks of the Fall League rehabbing again. Then I get pulled from the fall league for knee tendonitis. They say I have a bone spur in my knee. So I get the bone spur removed. So I miss spring training in 2018. So now I gotta go into another season with no spring trainings and no like real practices. It was just a lot of like, my knee hurts, honestly, for like two, three years. I finally finished rehabbing. They tell me I'm going back to Modesto. It's kind of an up and down experience. like. I was doing doing okay. Knee was kind of hurting, kind of not. First base hit for Kyle Lewis with the Nuts this year. I went to a double A at the end of that year. Relay throw is on the way, and it is hey. in time. Lewis is just cut down at third. Didn't do well, but I played, you know. So in my head, it's a it's an accomplishment. Like I made it to double A. This is driven down the right field line deep. Fair, a two-run home run. Kyle Lewis homering again. Wanted to go into that offseason like, man, just please just let me have an offseason where I'm not, you know, just struggling. 2019, they invite me to big league camp. And uh, I'm like, all right, I got to go in there healthy, you know, and show that I'm ready. So go to big league camp 2019 and uh, don't know what to expect with that situation. Ended up doing really well uh, in camp. That was absolutely barreled up. Take a look at this swing. And he's able to get Ooh. the barrel to it, you bet. Back leg it. 
impressive. A good start for him. A couple of hits, including that home run. That kind of like really gave me that confidence of like, all right, you know, now I can play. This is going to be my story, like my call up story is going to be whatever happens on this first day. And you only get one first day and you're going to tell that story for your whole life. And the weather couldn't be more perfect for baseball tonight. Cincinnati Reds in town. I didn't even know how to be nervous. I was just trying to be so locked in. Did you ever doubt that you would get to this point given the injury and given everything you've been through? Uh, I mean, maybe, you know, in passing, maybe some thoughts, but for the most part, I just try to keep my head down and, and keep working. And uh, definitely not done. Gonna try to keep working even some more, but, you know, it's definitely, a, you know, a, a great accomplishment. Man, that was emotional. That was emotional. We were able to see him walk out on that field just to see something that he has worked so hard for actually come to fruition. It just brought it all home. Here he is, right fielder Kyle Lewis. Getting ready to make his Major League debut. What a journey for this young man. Waiting a long time for this. And he's been through a lot. I remember it was 2-0. And my first at bat, he was throwing hard, man. He was throwing hard. So my first at bat, swinging all the fastballs up. Pitch on the way. Check swing, and it's up and in. Did he go? Yes, he did. Welcome to the big leagues. And the count is 0-1 on Kyle. Swing and a miss, and the count is nothing in two. And so I remember thinking, like, all right, he's probably gonna throw this fastball up right here just because um, he's trying to get me fastball up. And it's 2 0, so it's probably gonna be in, you know, to try to get on my hands. So I'm just not even gonna leg kick. That's what I told myself. I was like, I'm just not even gonna leg kick. I'm just gonna, you know, pick my foot up, and if it's a fastball, I'm going. The windup by Bowery delivers swing and a high fly ball deep into the gap in left center field. Going, going, goodbye baseball into the Mariner bullpen. It was just like we all floating. Welcome to the big leagues, Kyle Lewis. Bring him into that circle of joy. And I actually had my phone in my hand trying to record that back. And the next thing you know, my camera, my phone's going all around and I'm looking at the ball fly to the stadium. It's like the skies open up. We're yelling and screaming, hands in the air, you know. Ruth and Charles Lewis, they are digging that. Yes, sir. I told myself, like, you hit a home run, you got to look up to your family. The whole thing just became like, man, a movie almost. It became like a story, but it felt like really like a movie, like a director was like, all right, now at this point he's going to hit a home run. And action, like that's how it felt. Like, it felt like I was in a movie, so. Yeah, it's just, you know, walking on air, man. I'm floating out there. Ball flies a little more here. Ball flies a little more, but, you know, I'll get a jump. <laughs> man, we, after that, um, I got out to the tunnel where they were at, and we were just kind of, like, just in shock. Everybody was in shock. Like, it was just a, another one of them, like, little moments and full circle moments that you get throughout life where you can just kind of, like, just look at each other and reflect like I did that like or we did that honestly it's like we did it because they was there the whole time I feel like I now that I was able to see you know some some big league games like my window had opened this kid has been phenomenal holy smokes what a catch by the kid by baseball holy smokes Kyle Lewis like you don't want to have to do another one of these dig yourself out of a hole situations like you want to stay in that window this kid has been unbelievable Everyone inside Studio 3 for this MLB Tonight special report. We have breaking news. The coronavirus pandemic is forcing Major League Baseball to alter its schedule. Yeah, when I saw COVID was going to shut down the season for a little bit, if I really use this time as like another mini off season, I'm like, this might be a blessing. I just went up to my high school. I was able to get my hitting in and get my uh, throwing and defensive work in. So. We had a lot of time to focus on getting him ready for the game. 
So we worked on his uh, flexibility, mobility, range of motion, uh, core strength, balance, power. What he did in that time frame was very noticeable. Um, he was training different, uh, he was moving differently. You just, you could tell he was just free of any issues, you know, the knee issues that he was dealing with early in his career that were behind him. Watching how the ball was jumping off was bad, and the quality had bad, so you're like, hey, this could be an interesting season for Kyle Lewis. And then, you know, he just hit the ground running from opening day and moving forward. And goodbye, baseball! What a way to start off the 2020 season. And this is gone, it's another home run! This year was pretty amazing. You know, you hear the other reporters and the, the, the sports casters, the play-by-play -play guys, they're throwing out accolades about them. Fifth home run for the rookie Lewis to lead all rookies in the American League. People in the game respect and look up to him and talk to him the way they do. That's really what, you know, what's really gratifying for me is to see him, see him evolve. God home run, Kyle Lewis! getting an opportunity to watch him play every day, you know, against the best in the world. The thing that stood out for me with Kyle was not just what he does physically, but mentally. His ability to stay in the moment. You know, what do I need to do to compete today, to have success today, to help my team win? Just an awesome uh, step out year for him, and we really needed it. And it is gone. Goodbye baseball, in and out of the seats. I think we had a chance to finally exhale and go, okay, let's just enjoy this. And every time we talked to him, it was like, son, just enjoy the journey. We don't know anything about tomorrow. We don't know anything about next year. But right now, you are here for a reason. Enjoy your journey. Every time we talked to him before game, it was have fun. What a drive by Kyle Lewis. The catch, I mean, it was a crazy day. Double header, bases are loaded, the ball's hit, kind of holding my breath. Swinging a high fly ball, deep left center field. I kind of was just, you know, looking like, oh, I got a chance at this. As I'm running, I'm like, all right, this is your one. Like, this is your chance. Like, this is your time to shine. On the run to the one track, Kyle Lewis near the wall. The ball's about to be here, like it's time to go. Get your steps right, one, two. And then it's like, goes black. Like I don't remember being in the air. Like that part is always a blur. Leaps up and he makes the catch! Holy smokes, Kyle Lewis! Over the wall and left center brings it back! And out of nowhere, you know, you see him go way up over the wall, you know, catch the dang thing and you're out of the inning. And he takes a grand salami away from Ramon Laureano. I was like, yeah, you did that. I guess I was thinking, yeah, you did that. Uh, being a competitor like he is, never giving up on plays, it was awesome uh, to see him finish that play. To be able to watch what he did at the plate was outstanding, but also his defense and his leadership in the outfield, um, I don't think it's talked about enough. Diving and making the catch, Kyle Lewis. This kid has done it all. Just the confidence he gives a pitcher. You know, when we're in a tight ball game and we got Kalu coming up, I know that we're gonna have a good chance to score some runs. You cannot stop number one. Just the energy, the way he can literally take control of a game and, and change it into our favor. You can just stamp that Rookie of the Year award, send it right here to T-Mobile Park with Lewis on the front. This has been a collective effort. This is a journey that our family has gone on. We have supported. We don't miss games. You know, we're there because we want him to know as a family, we're with you. Being able to represent, you know, the city, city that's so excited, you know, wanting, you know, to be excited for our baseball team. Like, it's a blessing. That's why I run out to center field before the games and I just give gratitude. I just say thank you for another opportunity to be out here because I'm not in a position to take anything for granted anymore. And uh, I'm not in a position to take any season for granted. I'm not in a position to take a game for granted, you know. Kyle Lewis is a special athlete. He's explosive, he's creative on the field. He has an enormous baseball IQ that's only growing. This is only just the beginning for him. He's got the personality that, uh, you know, I'm gonna attract people to him. Uh, and part of that is because he takes his job very seriously. And it's a very deep thinker. 
Uh, it's not just what you see, you know, on the cover. You got to open up the book and see what's inside. And that's when, uh, when you get to really uh, know him and understand how he's wired. Uh, he is the type of person that teammates are going to gravitate to, and he's certainly got leadership quality. You're going to see a lot of Kyle Lewis jerseys being worn around T-Mobile Park. That's for sure. Kyle Lewis leaving the yard. Everything's a blessing, so I take it in stride, man. Being able to jump at the wall again is something I don't take lightly. That's why I jump a lot, because, like, man, I'm used to, like, when I couldn't. Jump leap, and he makes the catch. He just brought it back. Kyle Lewis with some robbery in center field. It's just really cool to put that uniform on. And the fact that they want me to put that uniform on every day, man, it's like some I still get chills every time. You go in there and they hang your uniform up for you. You see that number one on there. It's just like, man, like, that's crazy. Kyle knows that he's just kind of scratching the surface right now. And to be great in this league, you need to be good for a long time. And, and that's really his goal. You know, 162, we understand, is going to be a much longer season. It's going to have a host of challenges and, and experiences and games and slumps and whatnot. So that's just the next challenge ahead. Kyle Lewis, way out of here. I think to uh, bring the first championship to Seattle, you got to make the playoffs. And I think making the playoffs in this city is going to turn it up to a whole new level. And uh, that's what I want to see. I want to see how the fans turn out when we get back to the playoffs and what kind of juice that puts into the city. And, uh, and then we go from there. You got to run your own race. You got to live your life. And you got to write your own story.